Greetings everybody. This is Hearing God number 14 through the Holy Spirit. Here we are on the way up to the Bobby Arnskruf in South Africa. But we'll start with John 14 verse 26. But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Here Jesus is speaking directly to us. Jesus had the Father dwelling in his heart, but now the Father has sent his Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. And that is not all. We have the peace of Jesus dwelling in us. Let's read John 14, 27 to 29. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You've heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And I have told you before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe. Jesus told us everything he was going to do before he did it, before he went to the cross. And then he did it, just as he said he would. Why do we have be trouble believing what he says? We need to believe more, have more faith in all he's told us. John 15, 4 to 19. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater one has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I have commanded you, that you will love one another. And John 15, 26 says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit has come and has been coming to every believer who will receive Him for over 2,000 years. Everything that Jesus said in the book of John has come true, just as true as every miracle He did, every healing He did, and every teaching He has given us. He is the truth and he has proved himself to us. And the Holy Spirit within us teaches us all we need to know and bring to our remembrance all that we need at any given point of time. The Holy Spirit also enables us to do the works of Jesus as we witness to others. John 16, 2-4 does give us a warning though that we may need one day. 
they will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Are we ready to follow Jesus whatever the cost? Let us make that choice and say yes, for even death cannot separate us from the love of the Lord. Dwelling on John 16, 2-4 a little more, the Lord showed me how the umbilical cord must be cut off before babies can breathe on their own. And thus all generations are born in this way. He then showed me how Adam and Eve were spiritually alive before they sinned and how the God-given spirit within us would have worked in a similar way. But the fall of man caused us to be born spiritually dead. Then he showed me how receiving Jesus as Lord and Saviour restored the silver cord through the Holy Spirit. Let's read Jeremiah 50, verse 5. They shall ask the way to Zion, with faces turned towards it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. And 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Wherever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cisterns, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. The beautiful things of the earth are fragile and perish, but when we have a reverent and loving relationship with our Creator, the Spirit within us returns to God who gave us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or damage, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We as regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. These wonderful words show us that when we receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit abides within us, nothing whatsoever can sever our connection with Christ. Our connection with Christ is like a cord that is invisible yet stronger than steel. For just as death could not separate Jesus from God, we too cannot be separated from Christ by death, but will return to God in our spirits and soul to live forever with him. Living for God therefore becomes our greatest desire on earth, and getting to know God more and more brings this to a new dimension. It's not just living for God, but rather living and acting from within the presence of God in joyful, yielded obedience formed from our relationship with Him. We learn more and more to see with Him what is to be our course of action, knowing He is with us and that He will do what we cannot do in miracle works and in healing the sick. And this type of service is more like teamwork with God when it is fully effective, it results in much fruit. Working from within his presence is much more effective than just working for him. It is only in prayer that we can discover this and then live it out in action. Colossians 2, 9-10 says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule 
and authority. It is only by living in Christ through prayer and action that we can attain his authority and power over every demon and every sickness. Without him, we are powerless to do anything. And if we are only spending a limited time in God's presence, how can we live fully in him or have full authority over demons or sicknesses that we try and cast out in his name? It's only when we grow into Christ's presence through prayer and lifestyle that we will begin to live in his presence, in the heavenly realm, even as we walk on earth. Only as we live in Christ, that is yielded to him in every area of our lives, knowing his glorious presence, by knowing him through prayer, that we can begin to live our lives from within his presence in effective, victorious work on this earth and gain in Christ full victory to cast out demons and to pray for the sick in the name of Jesus and watch Jesus heal them. Well, this is my goal, pursue and to grow up in Christ in every way until it's attained in my life and lived out in my life in every way. And he's dramatically changing me already. Every saying of Jesus on only doing the Father's will teaches us different areas that will affect our lives so that we are raised up into a new level of walking in Him. The more we come to know God, the more we will know how to walk in Him as we serve Him in our ministries, which He's entrusted to us. To come to know God more also means we must wait on Him more in prayer. And waiting on God is not passive, but it is a passion to do His will. It is about waiting on Him for wisdom or instructions on how to do His will or for an answer to a problem, and then for his wisdom of how to deal with it. It is our love for God that motivates us to be disciplined about waiting on him, to find out how to express our love for him creatively and effectively in service. Without this discipline and focus, we could fail to hear God, and in some instances, make big mistakes. Waiting on God with such intense focus will draw him to answer us and to equip us for the work ahead. Psalm 37 verse 9 says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And if you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Please cleanse me from any sin in my life right now. Lord, help me to serve you. So I ask you, Lord, please baptize me in your glorious Holy Spirit. I receive you now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now simply receive him now. Pray, get to know God. He may give you gifts, receive them, use them, put them into practice and grow in Him daily. And remember, the Lord loves you so, so much. God bless you. Jesus, you